All right, end-to-end -end monitoring with the Prometheus operator. Uh, as introduced, I'll, I'll cover Prometheus as a monitoring system. We'll dive a little bit into how to monitor Kubernetes clusters. But this is like seen as an introduction to monitoring and how you can do that in a very agile, agile world, very vivid, vivid uh, infrastructure. All right, I'm, I'm Max. Uh, we got, I think, an entire hour with each other. That's a very long uh, talk slot. So please feel free to ask questions during the talk. If you have any, we're not a big group, so we can go a little bit into detail and stuff you're actually interested in. Um, in addition, if you have any questions afterwards, I'll stick around a little bit. Uh, I got a talk right after this about Kubernetes itself. So if you still like, if, if you're a little bit intrigued after this and want to learn more about Kubernetes itself, I think it's just in a different room. You can check it out in your schedule. Um, other than that, I'm reachable over social media, so feel free to reach out. And uh, email is fine as well, of course. Okay, um, why is somebody from Core staying here, standing here, and uh, why is he giving this talk? Um, so Core uh, it's a company in San Francisco, uh, based in San Francisco and New York and Berlin. Uh, the idea is to secure, simplify, and automate container infrastructure. That's a, that's a bunch of buzzwords, and I know that's not very descriptive and not very helpful. So let's go a little bit into what Chorus does, and then we can go over Prometheus. Uh, so we have two enterprise products, Tectonic and Quay. I don't think this is the scope of this conference, so we'll skip all the closed source stuff for now. Um, and then we got Container Linux as a Linux distribution, very bare metal. It's, um, it's open source entirely, all these products. Uh, Rocket as a, a container engine, Flannel as an overlay network where Kubernetes is uh, based on, and then etcd, where it's pretty much the brain of Kubernetes nowadays. And in addition to our own products, we're also heavily invested into Prometheus and Kubernetes, so we're involved in upstream development, and um, yeah, these are our products right now. Okay, moving on from here. Um, in addition, as we are very invested into Prometheus itself, a lot of our uh, people are actually part of the Prometheus team. I just joined as well. Um, so we're based, off the, based to the open source upstream project as well. Okay, so we want to talk about monitoring today. And um, well, first of all, let's question the idea of monitoring. Why in the world would you need monitoring? especially at the beginning if you're an, I don't know, a startup and you definitely don't care about monitoring at all. But once somebody tweets at you that your service is down, you might care a little bit more. And uh, that's probably the number one thing about monitoring is the alerting part, uh, right? You want to be woken up in the night if your service is down. And you want to be woken up in the night better if right before your service is down, not during your service being down. And then there's a second dimension to monitoring. That would be long-term trend analysis. If you're doing capacity planning, for example, um, if you're, I don't know, trying to survive Black Friday in America, uh, you probably want to buy a couple more servers and run these right before, um, instead of um, being out of, out of capacity, pretty much. All right, uh, just to get a little grasp what kind of audience we have here, like who's maintaining uh, a, a production service at the moment. Okay, we do have a couple of hands. Who's taking care of the monitoring setup? Is this company or it is? Okay, cool. Okay, who's using Prometheus? All right, <laughs> perfect. Maybe you do the talk. <laughs> All right, what is Prometheus? Um, Prometheus is an open source monitoring tool, and it uh, it started off at SoundCloud. Uh, or let's say most of the people that started Prometheus started uh, was, were working in SoundCloud. And it is heavily inspired by Borgmon. You don't really need to know what Borgmon is, but you might know what Borg is. Borg is the internal container orchestrator at Google. You can compare it to Kubernetes. I'll go into detail in my second talk. And so it was built at SoundCloud, and the idea is pretty much people leaving Google and they're missing the tools they have at Google. And now they build it or they look for it in the open and can't find it, so they develop it. And that's how Prometheus started. A little bit more technical, uh, Prometheus believes in the church of Paul. 
So there's the two ideas, pull or push based monitoring. I don't want to start a huge discussion here. Uh, Prometheus is pull based. That means your monitoring system goes to your services and checks if they are right. Not your services send uh, health checks to your monitoring system. Then next up, uh, in the end, a monitoring system could be seen as just a database. And a database we probably want to query and uh, analyze. So what Prometheus follows is a multi-dimensional data model done by key value pairs, so labels called in Prometheus, uh, where you can analyze the data that you scrape very nicely. Um, in addition, Prometheus is all about metrics. It's not about logging. It's not about tracing. I'll go into detail why it's not about logging. But tracing, simply, it doesn't have the functionality. So you cannot trace your packages through your infrastructure with Prometheus. OK, and last, what is, might be interesting or might be important for your monitoring system, Prometheus is not about magic. I'm not going to talk about artificial intelligence. I'm not going to talk about blockchains today. Prometheus is no magic involved. It's, it's configuration that you have to apply in the right way. OK, uh, basics about Prometheus. How does it work? I already told you it's a pull-based monitoring system. So uh, you have your targets, whatever you want to scrape. I don't know. I've just, I just came from PromCon, actually. That was the last couple of days. And people were telling about how they uh, monitor everything in their apartment. And they send alerts whenever they need to air out their apartment who, due to humidity. So you can pretty much do anything here. But it's probably focused on the uh, server infrastructure, right? So targets could you be your applications, could be your operating systems, whatever, whatnot. Um, and the idea is you expose a slash metrics endpoint. That's just an HTTP endpoint. Um, and that can then be scraped by Prometheus every now and then. Uh, I think the default is 15 or 30 seconds. You can now configure it, of course. So it comes along and scrapes the data. How does that such a slash metrics endpoint look like? Uh, so you have like a little comment and then you first have the metric name, that's the exposition, the standard exposition format for Prometheus. Then you have labels, that in the end makes the multidimensional data model. And then in the end you got the value itself. Uh, this is right now trying to be standardized with the open metrics standard. You can have a look at that. Uh, I think there's an RFC in, in progress. All right, uh, so how would this look like? It's a very easy exposition format. You can develop it yourself. You can also use the client libraries that Prometheus actually offers. Well, uh, a request comes in, you increase your number. And when the next request comes in, you increase your number again, right? Nothing, nothing crazy, no, no magic. Why is it not about logging here, as I said earlier? Well, logging, you probably want to identify every single request, and here, Prometheus might come, uh, just get snapshots of that data here and uh, doesn't know about every single run, right? So it's not about logging, it's really just about metrics. Okay, so Prometheus scrapes that data and has all that data in its database. And, um, well, you want to do something with that data and that's why there's PromQL. Prometheus query language. It's just an endpoint on the Prometheus server in the end, and you send queries against it, and then you can query data with it. You might be asking why another query language? Why are we not simply using SQL? Um, there's more to it. Uh, Prometheus, uh, PromQL is just about answering monitoring questions, and once you've written th stuff in PromQL, you really don't want to go back to SQL. How would this look like? Um, let's see at the current percentage of HTTP errors across all my service instances. So for example, that would be one of the queries. So we sum by path, that would just be the endpoint of the API, uh, rate over the HTTP request total, filtered by status 500, and in the last five minutes, and divide that by the same thing, except not filtering by error codes, right? So really easy, and that's how we get the data, and now we have the percentages of uh, our error failures on our API. Now, numbers are great. We want dashboards. We want fancy big screens in our um, raw rooms of monitoring. So uh, you can extend this via the web UI. You can query and have nice graphs. And it also, of course, integrates with Grafana and other tools, graphing tools, where you can then have, I don't know, a million screens on your wall and have fancy, fancy graphs there. Uh, okay, all right. 
Um, now, having those fancy graphs is nice, but you probably don't want to set an alarm every one hour during the night to look at your graphs if everything is going all right. So you want Prometheus to tell you automatically when something is not going the way it should go. So that's the idea of alert definitions. So you tell Prometheus what is a bad state of my system, and then Prometheus uh, would go over, over its data um, every, I don't know what the standard, but it's just an interval. Um, it would go over the alert definitions, see if any of your data uh, returns to true on that, those alert definitions, and then sends out alerts. Um, this blew my mind at the beginning. Uh, let's do with PromQL, let's do a quick linear prediction if our disks are running full in the next four hours. So that would be just linear predict, node file system, look at it in this one hour and see what is happening in the next four hours. And if that is below zero, you probably want to be woken up and probably want to provision more storage. Okay, so you give these alert definitions to Prometheus. Prometheus goes over its data every now and then. Um, and then sends out alerts. But it actually doesn't send out alert right away to PagerDuty or email or Slack, but actually there's something in between and that would be Alert Manager. It's another component, I'll go into detail while that is there. The people that are using Prometheus, who's using Alert Manager? That would be very, two, okay, Ah, oh, man. Okay, hopefully more after this. Um, okay, the idea behind Alert Manager is um, Running Prometheus HA, so in high availability, is just running two Prometheus next to each other. They scrape the same data, they analyze the same data, thereby they send two alerts out. But you don't want to be alerted twice about everything, so what Alert Manager does, it deduplicates. Then in addition, it groups. So for example, if your storage cluster goes down and you have an alert for every disk in that storage cluster, you don't want to get an alert for every disk. So it groups it and then you have just one alert for your entire storage cluster. And then last, if your storage cluster goes down, you don't want to wake up the front-end engineers, but instead you only want to uh, wake up the uh, storage people. So you tell Alert Manager how your company structure looks like, and then Alert Manager knows where to route which alert. Okay, deduplicate route, uh, group and route. And then from Alert Manager, we just send it on to beta duty or whatever your integration uh, looks like. I think the ecosystem is really huge in Prometheus, so there's pretty much everything here. All right, cool. Uh, we covered the basic monitoring idea now, and I think I still have everyone with me, right? Is there any questions so far? It's, I think, pretty basic so far. Okay, all right, so let's divide the monitoring space into two different things from now on. And that will be application monitoring and cluster monitoring. Application is your actually business logic, and cluster monitoring is pretty much anything underneath with your infrastructure. So let's dive first into cluster monitoring, and um, I don't want to tell you anything about infrastructure that I have no clue about, so I'm going to talk about Kubernetes. That's like our core product at Corus, so I'm pretty familiar with that. So how would we monitor Kubernetes? Well, first of all, what is Kubernetes? Who here has ever heard of Kubernetes? I, w I would say pretty much. Right, okay, cool. We're good hype-driven developers. Uh, all right, um, who is using pr uh, Kubernetes? Cool, cool, okay, perfect. Who's using it in production? All right, your hand is going up every time. Pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> all right, uh, Kubernetes is a platform for running containerized applications. Come to my second talk if you want to learn a lot more. Um, it was announced in uh, 2014 by Google. Why Google? Well, Google has a lot of experience running containers. Actually, a lot of the technologies that enable us today to run Linux containers is contributed by Google to the Linux kernel. Um, they open sourced the ideas and learnings in 2014. The community picked it up and they developed it in the open together. And in 2015, it was released as 1.0 and given to the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And uh, so it's not part of Google anymore, but it is actually now part of CNCF, but Google is still high, uh, heavily invested in it. Okay, so how would Kubernetes look like? Uh, you have a master node and you have a bunch of components and surprise, surprise, uh, they all expose metrics. They all expose the slash metrics endpoint, so that is really, really nice. You're up and running. You just have to point your Prometheus against it, and that's it. 
Then in addition, you have worker nodes and again, uh, all the components, all the Kubernetes components expose metrics by default and thereby uh, you're good to go as well. So we covered the, the cluster monitoring here. And next up would be the application monitoring. So the idea is you have a bunch of applications, you probably replicate them as well, you group them in kind, some kind of service, and then you have Prometheus. And now where to go from here? Well, the idea is Prometheus really doesn't know where your applications live. So uh, what Prometheus has is service discovery integrations, like for example with Kubernetes. So it asks the Kubernetes API server where do all the applications live, and then it can scrape the applications, and you're good to go got all your application monitoring set up. Um, it doesn't only, Prometheus is very versatile, you can use it in pretty much any environment. Uh, you can set your targets statically. Uh, you can use DNS, of course, but any kind of other service discovery integrations. Okay, so I, I made this seem pretty easy, but like if you would set me in front of a computer and say, hey, please set this up, I probably would still need a couple of days to really make this very sturdy, especially in terms of monitoring. You want this very, very well done. And now we're all running Kubernetes, especially we are running Kubernetes, right? So why don't we share some ideas and learnings and um, do this all together as we're all running the same thing underneath? So in here, I want to introduce the Prometheus operator. Sorry for the little bit long introduction here. Um, so the idea is behind an operator, and uh, this term was co uh, coined by CoreOS, but there's really nothing special behind it. Uh, we have a bunch of application-specific operational knowledge. Like for example, probably one here in the room really knows how to operate a MySQL database. And for example, we are very, uh, we very much know how to run your Prometheus in a Kubernetes environment. And instead of writing a bunch of blog posts all over, uh, why don't we just put that into code? And instead of giving you all the blog posts, why don't we give that, you that code as an operator? You deploy that operator inside of your cluster and you just talk to that operator and make everything, your life, a lot easier. So we have done that with Prometheus and the Prometheus operator. Uh, the idea is that it automatically manages and upgrades um, your Prometheus and your alert manager. And uh, we can natively configure Prometheus and Alert Manager uh, via the Prometheus operator. And then that's how it will look like. If you, you, you might be familiar with deployment YAMLs, just the configuration uh, files, right? And instead of writing just deployment YAMLs, you would then write Prometheus YAMLs and the Prometheus operator would understand those and automatically deploy everything in your cluster that is needed. And uh, we even went one step further as we, I'm not saying Chorus, but we as a community entirely, uh, that is, would not have been possible without it. Um, we have a single command, um, uh, it's just a script that brings up your entire cluster monitoring. So you have a vanilla Kubernetes cluster, you run that script and we set up alert manager Prometheus, we set up alerting rules because you probably all want to be alerted when your API server goes down. Um, and we set up dashboarding for you. And yeah, that's, that's what I would uh, uh, present in a little demo. But are there any questions so far? I think I'm rushing way too fast through my time here. <laughs> Don't know how to entertain you for an entire hour. <laughs> All right, uh, okay. Um, so I hacked a little bit, or I cheated a little bit. I just have a Minikube cluster here running. I uh, hope you can all see that. Is that okay, the size? All right. Okay. Um, so let's. I just do a watch on all my containers, uh, all my pods here. Let's just put it this way. Um, and you just see all the the pods that are running there. And what I do now is I can uh, run the Cube Prometheus project. I just want to show you. So it's just that single command. It's just a script in the end, and that will deploy all the components that you need. So. First of all, it would start the Prometheus operator. That's the operational knowledge that we all gathered and we're putting into code. Uh, once that is up and running, we'll start up, for example, Prometheus itself. We'll start up an alert manager cluster for you. We'll start up uh, dashboarding, Grafana. 
was the Cube state metrics that actually uh, to really analyze your Kubernetes cluster. So Cube state metrics talks to the API server and thereby gets all the metrics. Um, what else? Node exporter to look what is going on on your machines actually. So at, in the end, it's kind of difficult to get a slash metrics HTTP endpoint in the Linux kernel. Uh, I think Linus Torvald would probably not get that merged. So what we just do is have a little sidecar. That's the node exporter. You run it on your node and it exposes the metrics. All right. Um, would like to wait for it to to get uh, created, but let's have a look if this is actually already working. Okay. So yeah, you have the Prometheus. Um, as always, open source is not known for amazing front ends, but definitely for amazing uh, technology underneath. So uh, let's just see. Here we have the targets that we're scraping. For example, uh, we're scraping Alert Manager itself. We're scraping the API server. We're scraping the kube state metrics that I talked about. We scrape the kubelet. We scrape the node exporter and the Prometheus itself. So you have your cluster monitoring yourself. Uh, done, and you can just extend it for your application monitoring. And from here, uh, let's go to the fancy dashboards. It's probably not a lot of data so far, but we bring up Grafana for you, and we configure everything, and you just have to buy the monitors and uh, put it on there, basically. And uh, last, as I said, uh, Prometheus doesn't send out alerts itself, but that's actually done by Alert Manager. Uh, yeah, and that is the alert manager UI, and yeah, you're up and running there as well. And if you don't like it, uh, you can take it down in the same way as well, just as a script. All right. Um, see what else I got here. So let's do a real quick recap. And then, so what is Prometheus all about? It's a pull-based monitoring system. It believes in the church of pull. It's multi-dimensional. Uh, you can query the data very nicely. It's metrics. It's not about logging. It's not about tracing. And especially, it's no magic. Uh, you want to sleep in the night, and you don't want magic, magic to happen at that time. Uh, it scrapes your targets every 15 seconds. Um, it sends those. You give it alert definitions and sets, sends alerts out to Alert Manager. Uh, we went one step further. We took all of our knowledge and put it into code and gave it to the open source community as an operator. Um, and the open source community reacted even further and took it one step further and automated the entire cluster monitoring. OK. All right. Where can you go from here? Well, first of all, Prometheus IO. Uh, that's the main project page. Uh, that's probably very interesting for you. And then the Prometheus operator uh, repository. Everything I showed today is completely open source. It's all free for you to use. Um, OK. And if you really want to get involved, of course, we're hiring. Uh, we're hiring in San Francisco, New York, and Berlin. Um, I don't know if you are students. For example, we're also hiring for internships. We're right now hiring for Prometheus upstream developers and automation engineers. So we're very much looking for new employees here. So feel free to ask me or look on our careers page or send me an email. OK, and that's it. I hope, hope you liked it and hope you're all setting up Prometheus now. <laughs> Thanks. All right, any, any questions? OK, I got one there. Uh, one question uh, to the operator. Uh, is it, um, so when I have the mic, when I do the deployment, I have to add it to the deployment script? So I Okay, I, I'm supposed to repeat every question. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, what's the idea behind the Prometheus operator, and how do I start new Prometheuses, right? Yes. Is that? If I understand it right, you have to use it for every service deployment. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I can just show you some code. Um, so, the idea behind Kubernetes is well, it is that uh, big framework, right? Uh, but you can extend it as well, and that's done via third-party resources, TPRs. These are just, in the end, it's just config files that you deploy inside of your Kubernetes cluster. And we, as Prometheus operator, we listen to any of those changes. And whenever that config file exists or changes or whatever, we create the Prometheus for you. 
And what I, in the end, with this script just did is, let's, let's have a look at that. Um, so if I go here, and if I go into cluster monitoring, um, so, uh, ah, hang on, sorry. I need to go into manifests. If I go into Prometheus, for example, um, I have the Prometheus KDS YAML, and that's just the entire description. So it's a third-party resource, and that is called Prometheus, and that's the only thing that you do create in your cluster, and then the Prometheus operator will pick this up. So you don't have to actually have to configure, I don't know, storage. You don't have to configure which alert managers to talk to, which targets to scrape, and so on. But instead, you just give us this, and then we know how to best operate uh, Prometheus inside your Kubernetes cluster. Does that answer it? Is that but right? That's just a modified deployment instruction. Um, it's, it's not a deployment instruction. What we, in the end, do under the hood is we pick up that configuration file and we create the deployments for you. Yeah, but it's just a, just a wrapper for the, for the deployment resource. Yeah, let's call it wrapper, yeah. And it does a little bit more, so it does the configuration around it as well. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't. Uh, <laughs> it is a wrapper around it, yeah, in the end. Yeah. OK, any, any Prometheus-related questions, anything? Any more? Yes, please. Uh, not at all. Uh, so um, the, uh, the question is, should uh, the uh, Prometheus operator just be for cluster monitoring? Um, we, we do offer you a full set of cluster monitoring, but it's also for application monitoring. So in the Prometheus operator repo, you also have a folder for, uh, so there's, there's kubeprometheus, and I think it's inside of manifests. You have uh, the examples folder, and there you find uh, in this one, you find a full example with, uh, with an application. Uh, so we deploy a little application for you. And then you just configure Prometheus. Yeah. And uh, what you do instead of, um, instead of reconfiguring your entire environment, you probably ask your operations team, you want to set up Prometheus, and then just want to give your developer team a way how they can monitor their stuff. So they just have to create a TPR called service monitor and configure that to their pods, and that's all they do. And we pick up that service monitor, and uh, the Prometheus operator configures Prometheus uh, accordingly. Yeah. OK, so a bunch of automation here. OK. I just guess it's from lunch, all the silence. <laughs> all right, uh, if there's nothing more, I'm sorry, uh, not taking the entire hour. But uh, join me for the Kubernetes. Uh, Talk. We'll dive a lot deeper and I'll probably fill the hour. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, one please. Last question. So, um, the deployment team has to, to create another TPR for their, their own monitoring setup? Does because the deployment. Usually it's just I think an annotation just to say from me, for me it's straight true on, mm -hmm. the, on the deployment or on the part. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the idea is, um, the question is, how do I, to, uh, how do I make sure my deployments get, uh, get scraped, right? And um, that is done via service monitors. And maybe I can even, um, so first of all, let's look at this. So uh, we created, we registered, should I increase that or can you read that? Is that okay? Um, so uh, we registered three third-party resources. That would be Alert Manager, Prometheus, and Service Monitor. Uh, alert managers to create new alert managers or describe an alert manager cluster, Prometheus to describe Prometheus cluster, and service monitor is just, I want these services to be monitored. And now if I go uh, service monitor, uh, let's go of all namespaces. Now you see, um, for example, we have as I showed earlier, Prometheus is pretty much scraping everything in the cluster. So we created a service monitor for the alert manager cluster. We created a service monitor for the Cube API server. And that's what you would have to do in the end. So you just have to create a service monitor for your front end application. And then uh, that just points at your front end application. I can, I can show you. Can you show the example from the? Yeah, for sure. I can edit it if you want to. 
Uh, that's, for example, the cube state matrix. Maybe that's interesting. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Um, so this monitor. There you go. That will be the uh, config file. Um, you can, uh, so you just have uh, the, the labels, which, which app to scrape. And as in Kubernetes, everything works over labels, right? And uh, that's, that's all you pretty much have to do. Uh, the jobs label, uh, where to match, and the, the selector, which app to choose. And then Kube Prometheus, uh, Prometheus operator picks it up from there. Okay. And, that's the, and when, of course, you scale up your applications, uh, we'll automatically configure Prometheus to scrape all of those applications, of course. All right. Uh, yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so um, Prometheus can be configured for pretty much. Oh, I'm so horrible at this. <laughs> but thank you very much. <laughs> So how do you configure all your Prometheus and your Alert Manager and and so on? Um, that is uh, configured uh, inside config maps, of course. And uh, Prometheus can be pretty much used uh, for all kinds of different cluster orchestrators. But we want to give you a subset here, right? We want to give you a specialized version, so you don't have all the options that you have in normal Prometheus. But you. Uh, we, well, you have the options that we think are uh, the, the ones you actually need. And uh, I can do the same thing here for if I get, uh, get Prometheus uh, across all namespaces. Look at that. Um, and then, for example, if I edit this, edit uh, dash n monitoring. Uh, So now this is the, your, your Prometheus configuration. You only play around in this. And uh, for example, you have your alert manager. You configure Prometheus to go to that alert manager. Uh, you specify how many replicas. You specify the resource this that you want. And you specify uh, which service monitors you want to pick up. So you might have like, I don't know, uh, a couple thousand of applications, and you don't want one Prometheus operator to scrape all of these, right? So you want to tell them, hey, please don't only scrape those uh, that are important for me. Yeah. And like data, retention. data retention, I think you can all configure it in here. So all the flags, all the standard flags, you can for sure configure in here. Yeah. If there's anything missing, as it's an open source project, uh, please, feel, please feel free to uh, raise issues. I think we have a very vivid uh, community around this. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, as, uh, monitoring and tra as uh, logging and tracing might be interesting, even if they are not covered by Prometheus, um, would you be able to recommend a solution for those? For logging, um, OK. Do I recommend a solution for logging? Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so the, the, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation pretty much has the entire set that you need for your, um, for your, uh, for your infrastructure build up. So I, would, I, I can't make any good suggestions, but look up CNCF and you'll find all the projects there. Yeah, that's the, the good thing. All the projects, of course, integrate nicely. All right. Anything else? Then I'll close here and just come come down here if you want to ask further questions. I can answer them in German as well. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.